and some other general rules that um, employers need to keep in mind. The, there is a 90-day waiting period, so when you hire the employees, they're not entitled to use any of the accrued vacate, uh, pay time off until their 90th day of employment. They still accrue the time off during that time period, but they can't use it until their 90th day. So that's a little bit of a uh, buffer for the employers to make sure that the employee is going to work out before the employee actually starts taking the pay, pay time off. The employers, again, can limit the amount of sick, uh, sick leave to 24 hours or three days per year. And again, the employer is going to have to set this out in writing and provide that notice to the employees. And in our folder that you guys have, there is a notice to employee that's published by the, the state labor commissioner. And that notice, if you should already be using that for all of your new hires, but you can use that for all of the employees that are currently working for you as notice of what the policy is going forward as well. That document's in your, in your packet. We can go over that too if you guys have any questions later. Uh, one issue that comes up is, well, what if I have an employee who just says I'm going out to the doctor, I only need one hour off um, and I'll be back. I'm just gonna go to the dentist. The employer can set the minimum increment at two hours, but you can't set it more than two hours. So you can't tell the employee in that situation uh, you know, you only need one hour to take the full day. We'll pay you for the full day. You can't do that. If the employee requests just a small time off, you have to give it to them in two hour increments. And then finally here, um, again, if they don't accrue the paid time off, you don't have to pay them for the time off. And it's important to keep, keep your records in order and track that appropriately. And if they are out and they're sick, you just treat it as a normal sick day as you do currently before this law went into place. One tricky issue is the rate of pay. What, if I have an hourly employee and the rate of pay changes, how, what, how am I going to pay them when they take a paid sick day? And if the pay fluctuates, basically you have to look back over the previous 90 days and do an average of what their hourly rate was for that 90 days, and that's what you're going to pay them out at uh, according to during the paid sick leave. So if you do have an employee that's making different amounts, you're gonna to have to start tracking that and be able to pull that up on a 90 day basis. Uh, the other issue which uh, Gene and Greg are gonna be talking about are service charges in response. A lot of restaurants are moving to a service charge to get away from this, um, the higher minimum wage and to spread some tips throughout the, uh, the restaurant a little better to be able to share the tips with the back of the house. One issue, though, is if you start imposing a service charge on your customers and you do away with tipping, that service charge, when you distribute that to the employees, is going to become wages to the employee, and the regular rate of pay is going to go up. For overtime purposes, it's going to be higher. You're going to have to pay overtime on that uh, portion that you distribute to the employees. And for the paid sick leave, that's going to increase how much you have to pay them out for the paid sick leave as well. Whereas if you just treat it as tips, the customer leaves a tip for the employee, that doesn't affect the regular rate of pay for overtime purposes or for the paid sick leave. Uh, some notice requirements that are in place. There's a poster employers have to have up. They should have it up already be, uh, at the beginning of this year. It's a one-page poster. You can download it off the internet and put it up next to all of your other posters. And there's also a new notice to employees that has to be used, and that's in your packet. I printed that out to everybody, too. Here's some key dates. Um, I'm not going to cover all of these right now, but some dates that are coming up uh, very quickly. I'm working with clients right now, actually, to get it in place. The first pay period after July 1st, you're going to have to report on the employee's pay stubs how much sick leave, they, if you're using the accrual method, how much they have accrued, and how much they have to use. So that's coming right up, right up on everybody. You need to start talking to your payroll company immediately to um, get that in place. Uh, ADP, I was just talking to them yesterday, they do have some modules that employers can use. You have to pay extra, from what I understand, to use this, but they do track it, they have this built out. But um, it's something they can't just do overnight, and I would recommend everybody start working on that as soon as possible.